In today's video, we are going to talk about the force feedback accuracy. Very important topic in sim racing. Hi, I'm Dennis, product engineer at VRS. And I'm Frank, senior systems engineer at VRS. In today's video, we are going to talk about the force feedback accuracy. We will touch on the slew rate. There is a test setup that we prepared for you to demonstrate how do we measure the accuracy. And we will also talk about the smoothing filters and the configuration tool options that you have to dial the force feedback to your liking. To make the video, we asked Paschalis, our driver, sim racing coach, to prepare some test data for us. Here is Paschalis driving. By the way, if you don't know him, he is very active on our Discord server. We invite you to join. Me and Frank also responding there occasionally. And we generally help each other. Our community is very active and helpful. We want you to join, we invite you to join. And keep talking there if you have any questions after the video. So we grab the data from Pash and we are playing it back on the wheelbase right now. Frank, could you explain the test setup and how does it actually work? What do we see on the screen? Yes, of course. So what are we trying to achieve here? We want to show you what the simulator is telling the wheelbase and we want to show you what the wheelbase is making out of that. And ideally, it's, it's a one-to-one -one copy and that's what we would call ideal playback accuracy. This is um, a so-called torque transducer. We have been mounting um, a fixed end on this side, so the, the wheelbase is trying to rotate the shaft against this fixed end and this torque transducer is measuring the amount of torque that it's generating in very in, in every moment of time and we are feeding this information into the oscilloscope so the oscilloscope can can tr can plot this over time in order to also visualize the force feedback information that is coming from the simulator or in our case from the telemetry playback program. We have been opening the device and we are sending a signal inside the device that which is which is recreating what it is seeing from the simulator. And we also show this on the oscilloscope. In addition to that, we have a third output and we will explain later why we have this, where we also ask the wheelbase to produce the torque that it is doing. But because we know the motor current, so we are visualizing basically the motor current, which is torque. And so we have three traces on the screen. Let me maybe talk viewers through the traces and what we see and you can help me by adjusting the scope and we can keep talking, explaining the setup. Now let's look at the generated forces. Let's start with the torque transducer. So the trace generated by the torque transducer is shown up on the scope in yellow and we have another capture of the output torque of the wheelbase and it is captured here. We are measuring the value proportional to the motor current which is directly tied to the output torque. The reason for that is that the torque transducer has certain delay in it. And if we now look at the value at the output of the wheelbase, which is shown in blue color, when we compare it, we can see that the shape is equal, but the value from the torque transducer is shifted in time because of its internal delay. So for the purposes of clarity, to not confuse you, in the remaining part of the video, we will be looking at the output torque of the wheelbase measured there compared with the input signal and not the value generated by the torque transducer. So now let me switch to the performance mode and no filtering at all. And we can now talk about the game input, the game commanded torque. Torque commanded by the game is displayed in a purple trace. If we stop the trace at some point, we can see the characteristic steps. This is how game can command the force feedback only in discrete steps certain amount of times per second so now if we enable the force feedback at the output of the wheelbase and we overlay them together we can see if we are able to match the force feedback requested by the game with our actual output and if you can see by the screen let me grab this picture for you and make it bigger on the screen here is this picture on the screen here you can barely see that it is two traces it looks like it's all blue but in reality, it just overlays so nicely that you cannot notice it. If we find the sharper edge where the transition is higher, the step requested by the game is higher, then we can actually notice a difference. Let us grab another picture. So now on that picture, you can see how the purple trace is not able to immediately catch up with the torque requested by the game. This is caused by the limited slew rate, the inherent characteristic of the motor. Now, you can also notice how the output torque nicely follows the 
blue line and achieves it without any overshoot or any unexpected behavior. This is something that you would call nicely tuned control systems. Now, you may ask if we can reproduce the force feedback so accurately with what is requested by the game. What is the question? Why there is so much nuance in the force feedback and how it's felt in between the manufacturers? So the truth is that you don't really want to see all this grain and hard transitions from one state to the other. This is what causing wheelbase to be loud. This is what makes you feel the force feedback as rough. Some people like it, some people not. And for this reason, we have introduced a whole set of smoothing filters so that you can pick and choose the force feedback that feels right to you. Now, Frank, could you please help us describe the smoothing filters and we can help, we can use this occasion and this setup to look at the filters and how they can make you fast faster. So what you have seen on the screen is real driving data. So it's not repeatable, it's not consistent, it's not easy to visualize. And to, in order to visualize the effects of changing settings in the system better, I will now switch the system to have it generate artificial test data, which is more suitable to demonstrate this. We have set up the artificial data test. And at first I want to run this through with you and to try out all the different filtering options. And at the moment, I just want you to listen to how this sounds and imagine how it would feel in your hands, how soft and or how rough it will sound. I will just read it out. None, responsive one, two, optimal, soft, one, two, three. That's also the order in which you have them in the configuration tool. And that's also, they are also ordered in the way how aggressive they reduce the output. So this is the most aggressive filter, soft 3, and I can even continue to talk because the wheelbase is barely making any effect anymore. I will turn it off again, and now we will take screenshots of each and every condition or each and every setting and put it on the screen so that I can discuss with you what you are seeing. Here you can see the setting filter none. That means there is nothing in between what the wheelbase gets from the simulator compared to what it produces. You can see in purple what the simulator is generating. You can see that it's doing the steps up and up and up and then down again and then up and up and up again. So it's repeating cycle. The pattern is comparable to something like very aggressive ABS driving or maybe a curb. We call this high frequency content because the data is changing quickly. That is in contrast to driving a corner where the force feedback is gradually increasing and then leveling at some point and then gradually decreasing again when you're exit the, exiting the corner. So that's, we call, we call this low frequency content. And the filters are about how to deal with high frequency content because there is an unwanted portion of this and that is the steps that the simulator is doing. Like it's changing, it's suddenly, it is all of a sudden changing to a new value and then all of a sudden changing to the next new value and that is gen generating steps or we call it also graininess and this is an unwanted behavior that is due to the nature of the simulator of producing force feedback output in cycles in the same way as it is producing um, 3D renderings in cycle. And in blue you can see the torque that the wheelbase is producing as a result of its commanded force feedback value. You can see it will follow the small steps very quickly, but for the large step going down, you can see that there is a noticeable delay. It needs some time to settle to the new value. In this next picture, you can see the responsive one setting. You can see that there is not much difference compared to the last picture. That means that the filter is removing very little of the output. And you could also hear this, like when I was changing, there was not much difference in the audible noise. Next one is responsive two. And I want you to notice the horizontal difference between the purple signal going down in the center of the screen and the response from the wheelbase in blue. You can see that there is a significant delay. So the blue is further to the right. And because the oscilloscope is showing time on the horizontal axis, that means that the produced force feedback from the wheelbase is delayed with respect to what is commanded from the wheelbase. In this picture, you can see the optimal setting. We call this optimal because you can see the blue signal is almost going in a straight line. Most of the 
stepping or notchiness of the input signal is removed. But you can also see that the delay has further increased. Next one is soft one. And I want you to focus on the lag, which I was describing between the input signal in purple and the output signal in blue. And you can see that the time at which the blue signal goes down again is almost two steps after the commanded torque. And I will now continue to show you soft two. Have a look, it's even increased. It's now three steps. And in soft three, it's barely, barely distinguishable, maybe four steps. Here you could see how your choice of a filter is affecting the latency or the lag that you are introducing in the system. The more you are filtering, the more lag you get. No filtering, on the other hand, gives you a lot of graininess, which you also don't want. So you have a compromise between that it feels right and also that it's acting fast. And why do we want to have it acting fast? There is two reasons about it. The one reason, of course, comparable to a joystick. When you press a fire button, you want the system to transfer it quickly to the game. And in this case, of course, you want to feel the changes in force feedback quick because then you are quicker in, in uh, reacting to a situation where you might be sliding out. Like it gives you a time advantage and it's actually noticeable. And the other reason why you don't want to have high lag is that a lag is introducing instability in the simulator in the way that if you are driving on a straight and you let loose or even let go of the wheel, you will experience that it tends to shake up and starts to oscillate. And this is a direct cause of too much delay in the system and you can control it through this selection. So now you know everything about filters. But you might ask, there is another setting which is called slow rate. What do I do with this? From theory, the answer is very simple. Use performance mode. Because what you do is you allow the wheelbase to act as fast as possible and to accurately replay whatever it is commanded to. If you have heavy filters, then it will behave slow. If you have no filters, then it will do as much as it can. Only use slower slow rates like balanced or quiet when the wheelbase is noisy because that's what the fast setting is doing. You can you have some audible hum or noise, whatever you call it. And if you don't want this, you can dial this down using slower slew rates. Today, we talked about the force feedback accuracy and learned that accuracy is not everything. It comes down to personal preference. And for that, we have slew rate adjustment settings and the filtering options. We are also working on additional filtering options the predictive filters. They would allow you to have as smooth force feedback as in the soft filters, but without introducing extra lag. But they do have certain trade-offs to them as well. We will describe this in upcoming blog posts, follow us on the social media, and then you will be first to learn about it. We make announcements about new firmware on our Discord community. If you join, you will get notified. Hopefully you learned something useful in today's video and we see you in the next one.